With us today, we have Howard Prager. Uh, Howard is president of Advanced Learning Group. Uh, he's an author, speaker, executive coach, leadership consultant, and he wrote the book, Make Someone's Day, Becoming a Memorable Leader in Work and Life. And, uh, and, and yeah, you know, Howard, you're, you know, he, he also has the distinction of being a friend of mine. So, you know, to me, that already makes my day to have you on the podcast. So Howard, thank you uh, so much for being on the Bregman Leadership Podcast. Oh, my, my pleasure, Peter. You do such awesome work out there. It's just a, a great to have this opportunity to have a conversation and share it with so many others. Well, I'm so happy that you came. Um, Howard, this might seem like an obvious question, uh, but what's the basic idea of Make Someone's Day? That, that's not obvious, and it's a great question. The four most powerful words one can say as a compliment are you made my day? It's something you don't say just as a thank you or I appreciate it. It's because someone has done something for you at the right time and in the right way to make a memorable difference. And that's what Make Someone's Day is all about. What can you do? What actions can you take to help others in that powerful way that causes them to say, you made my day? Um, so I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna jump into a harder question and and then we'll go into the process a little bit. Um, but for some reason, this question came up to me early on when I was reading the book, which is you know, and I, I'm thinking of uh, people I know who are in middle management in an organization, and this is just endemic of a challenge that I think a lot of people face but middle management where they might be caught between sort of a stressed out leadership and a frustrated staff. And, and um, you know, there's like, in, in order to make someone else's day, you have to be feeling pretty good yourself. Meaning it's, hard, I think, I, I might be wrong here, so challenge me if I'm wrong, but it's harder to make someone else's day if you're frustrated or you're getting pressed from one side and pressed from the other. And I'm curious about, advice you have before we even begin to think about the methodology for making someone's day or what that even looks like, advice you have for people whose day isn't being made by other people who might be sort of frustrated or having a hard day or, and, and you and I could both agree and maybe they could agree, God, if I made someone else's day, that would make my day so much better. And yet the leap to doing that is not easy. You know, this sort of gap between what I know I should do and what I actually do because I'm just not feeling good myself. Thoughts? Yes. Well, first of all, think of you, if you're a middle manager listening to this, think of the cream inside an Oreo cookie. That's who you are. You've got the people on top, which is one wafer that's crunching down, and the people who are reporting to you, that's another part that's crunching up. And you're that sweet cream in the middle of the cookie. So even though you don't think you've got, you know, you've got people calling on you from both ends, you've got that opportunity to make a difference both ways. Just think of that. If you can make your boss's day and your employee's day or, or a supervisor's manager's day, how powerful could that be? So you are in a great position, but I totally agree with you. You're also being squeezed. I mean, that, that, that there's a reason there's center stuff in the Oreo cookie, right? Otherwise it would be crumbled cookie. So, uh, so you are being squeezed on both ends, but you've got the opportunity to impact both sides, which is really a rare, a rare treat. And by doing so, you can make a difference, increase your productivity, retention and motivation either way. And you, it comes back to you. So one more thing, Peter. Yeah. I talk about the boomerang effect and I researched this. I looked at, into uh, scientists, neuroscientists and said, why is this happening? Why when I make someone's day, do I feel good? And it's because the mirror neurons that we have that reflect others. So you're absolutely right. If you go about thinking about how you as a middle manager can make someone's day, it's going to come back to you and it's going to help your day and raise your endorphins. 
So I agree with you 100%, right? And let's just say we're convinced. Like it's it's like the data's there. It's sort of intuitively, you know, clear uh, that that will happen, even obvious. And 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 yet to like, let's say I'm in this position where I've just been yelled at or someone very particularly is not making my day, you yeah. know? And like, my, you know, my question is, less about the motivation which is very clear and exists but the follow through like how do i bring myself out of a funk i might be feeling in the moment to reach out and make someone else's day which i know will make me feel better conceptually but when i'm not feeling good myself what thoughts do you have or advice do you have to help me get out of the funk i might be in in order to take that step that I know will be helpful, but it's still a, an emotionally difficult step to take. I'm, I'm going to take us aside a little bit because I have a chapter here in the book. I'm dealing with rudeness and incivility. And so mm -hmm. I'll say that what they're feeling when you're feeling yelled at is you're feeling that you're being, uh, being that people are being rude to you. Let me share an example. Unfortunately, we can all relate to, and that is drivers. Bad drivers are drivers who cut us off. Does that make you happy or mad? Mad. Of course, right? Right. So here's what I learned from my dad. And I know we were both close to our dad. So I thought this is this would be really mm -hmm. apropos, Peter. And my dad, you know, so when they pass you and all of a sudden you're both at the same traffic light together. And, you know, you could turn over and there's a certain finger you could display, you could shout something or whatever. But you know what he did? He turned to the other driver and smiled because he said, you know what? This isn't about me. They have no idea who I am. It's about trying to help lower their stress or frustration. And so think of it in that way. If your boss is yelling at you for some reason, they realize that they're feeling frustrated and they're being crushed too. They're not just doing it out of the blue. So what can you do to help reduce their stress, which in turn will help you ease up on your stress? And I put it here because my stress is all up here, my shoulders and neck. When that happens, I just get all tense. How about you, Peter? Where's your stress feel? Yeah, I feel it in my gut. I think I feel my, my stress often in my gut. It's funny, I've used that technique of sort of smiling and waving instead of you know getting angry. But mostly I do it because I know it'll piss off the other driver more than if I got angry. <laughs> so I'm not being quite as generous as you're as you're assuming, but it but it does make me it, it reduces the impact on me for sure right. uh, when right. I do that. Right. And, and that's what we need to do in these situations is reduce the impact on us because we can get worked up so easily. Our, we can wire our brains for negativity or positivity. And whichever way we wire it, those situations are going to uh, come more frequently. Uh, I'm sure you know people as I do who sort of walk around with like a great cloud over their head, right? Mm -hmm. Just whatever happens, it's just like they're, they're on the pessimistic versus the optimistic side. But why not wire it for positivity? Why not wire our brains so that we're looking at the positive? Uh, but but I also agree with you that those are tough situations. And so what do we, why. yeah, so what do we do when we're, I'm, I'm asking you like some downer questions and we'll go to the whole process in a second, the VIP model. But what do we do when we're, we might be surrounded by people who are looking at things negatively or even, even more accurately, I think for many of us, we're living in a culture of negativity. Like we're in a culture in the US certainly right now of you know criticism and complaint and disgust at the other side. And it's like a culture of negativity. And it it's almost um uh it, it's 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 almost seen as a betrayal almost of other people when you're not, when you don't look at things in a negative way, or like you're just, you know, too dumb to realize, you know, how bad things are, or, you know, and I wonder how we can insulate ourselves from, from that energy that is, is, you know, pretty pervasive, certainly nationally. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're, you're so right, Peter. It's almost like someone's opened up Pandora's box mm -hmm. to negativity and to anger and frustration. And, and that's a hard thing to get back in the box, right? We can't, I would love it if you and I could go out there, go out in the street, go out to knock on the doors and say, give me your anger. I'm going to take it away. I'm going to put it in the box and you'll be done with it. Um, that, that would be so, so easy and so helpful. Um, life isn't like that. And you're right. There is lots of, lots of negativity. Again, I, I just say, if we wire our brains and we don't succumb to it, that's the key. Don't succumb to the negativity. It's so easy to do. Someone so how do we not succumb to it? How do we not succumb to the negativity? Yeah. How do we, you know, it's almost like I'm asking you the question in the face of that, and I, I'm going to get into make someone's day, but what if that someone is you? Like, how do I, how do I, how do I start in a place by making my own day so that I have the the sort of energy and the positivity and what you're saying in order to then be able to make other people's day? That's, you know, here's what I do, and I like the way that you just phrased that, Peter. How can I start? having a different day than otherwise might be expected. Mm -hmm. So I'll, let me share with you a couple quick stories. Is that um, my first job, I worked for a big company, was there for 10 years and became friends with the security guards. And what would happen or other managers. And as I walked in, uh, I would stop and we would chat for just a couple minutes. And it was always these security guards all happened to be uh, students at a local university. And so we had some really interesting conversations. And just doing that would change my day in perspective. The same thing when I found I'm a morning person. And so um, I found another uh, manager director who was also a morning person. And we would just have a few, uh, a little chat around just on good things. And it would just get me set for the day. So that's what I say, look for the positive opportunity you can have to get started. And then all of a sudden, it's just going to uh, roll into the rest of your day. And it's going to be there to help you uh, withstand some of the anger and, and hostility that's out there. Yeah, one of the things that you say early on in the book is to become more aware about noticing when someone makes your day. Uh, and you sort of say, thank them, reinforce what they did and learn from that. Uh, and... And I think that's part of what you're saying now, which is, you know, do those things, but also notice what turns you like notice, you know, put on your mask first, kind of, you know, these sort of overused uh, uh, airline um, uh, neutral, neutral, direction. neutral face, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And to sort of notice, oh, that actually put me in a good mood. And maybe I should be doing a little bit more of that. Yeah. Um, one of the questions is how do we slow down enough to notice because we have to slow down enough to make someone else's day too. You're, you know, if I'm running late for a meeting, I'm going to rush past those security guards. Whereas, you know, I don't have the time in my, in my mind, I don't have the time to slow down and stop and, and, uh, you know, have a, have a five minute conversation with them because I'm just moving too fast. Right, right. That's, that's, if you know you've got a busy day, it's almost like working out, Peter. If I know I've got a busy day, I'm going to work out at six or seven in the morning. So I know I can get it in because right. otherwise my day is just going to go from meeting to meeting to meeting. And they often do. I'm sure yours does too. And, right. and um, uh, it's funny. I, we, I grew up and behind me, uh, right behind our house was a house with the trombonist from the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And mm -hmm. I would hear Frank warming up at 6 a.m. And I'm thinking, you know, your concert's not tonight. Why are you warming up? I asked him once. And he said, because if I don't warm up in the beginning, I'm never going to find time in the day to do so properly, to be at my best when I need to be. Right. It's so, great. yeah. So that's what I say is just try to find that time that you would for a, for a workout or, or whatever you need to do and get that, make sure you get done so you don't lose it. Right. And the same thing with, with uh, make someone stay. So explain the VIP model. Yeah. So I said, as I was thinking about this, I said, what's really make someone stay all about? It's about making others feel like a VIP. 
So I said, well, there's got to be a model here. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big, you know, I've got a social and IO psych background. So I said, there's always a model, right? And I like models that are acronyms and easy to remember. So V is to view and observe. And this could be done in person or online or on Zoom or however you're, you're looking at it um, to view and observe what's going on, what people might be experiencing, what they might be needing, what's happening. Uh, so view and observe is the V. I is to identify and consider. Once you've made your best estimate as to what they may need or what's going on with them, then you wanna identify and consider options of what you can do. So view and observe, identify and consider. And then the P is simply to plan and act. Sometimes it's as simple as a smile or a greeting. Sometimes it takes a, a lot more effort. So if you're trying to help someone with a project or get more funding or something, that's not a simple act, that's a more complex act. But that's it, to view and observe, identify and consider, plan and act. And then I've got a fourth step after you've done all this. So VIP is what you do. And then I say, and you need some R&R &R time. You need to be able to review and reflect on what happened, why you think it happened, what you did, what you might want to do next time, um, how, what the reactions were. So I've got some worksheets. Matter of fact, people can find them um, for free and download them from my website, howardhprager.com, uh, where you can track your progress in making someone's day. You know, one of the things that I really like about this process is that it's not just doing for someone what you want done for you. It's doing for someone what you gather they would want for them. And, mm -hmm. and I think in, in, in an age where we are, you know, consistently learning how to engage in diverse, uh, uh, inclusive workspaces, um, it, it's, it's important to recognize that the kind of thing that might make your day is not the same as the kind of thing that might make someone's day. It's not like, you know, do the same thing for everybody. And I'm curious for some advice you might have, especially when, you know, we're engaging and interacting with people who are very different from us, how we could do the view and observe in order to identify and consider effectively. So that's interesting because I've got workshops that help people learn and practice that skill. Uh, so so we're, we're talking about this right now in a work concept, Peter. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in a work con construct, um, we're, we're not, typically we're not just seeing people once, we're seeing people on a more regular basis. So we have a better chance of knowing them, knowing what, what might motivate them, or when, more importantly, when they might need something to help motivate and inspire them. So do, knowing that can really help you identify what others may need. And again, that's where the practice comes in because it doesn't work every time. Uh, I, I'd love it if it did, um, and, but that's where the track in the worksheets, what did you do? Who did you do it for? How did they react? So by being able to start measuring and looking at those and tracking that, and, you know, as our, our, our joint mentor, Marshall Goldsmith says, if you don't track it, it's not important. So track your usage of make someone stay and see how it works with, with that person. It's also, I, I've got to just add, Peter, that make someone stay is, is got to be situation dependent. So if you smiled or gave someone a, a a lift or a book or a resource or something, maybe that's exactly what they needed then, but they may need something completely different another time. So mm -hmm. it's trying to read both the person and the situation. Why is it so hard and seemingly unnatural to do? I mean, it seems like it's the most natural thing in the world. And yet, why aren't we all doing it all the time? We're swamped and you, you, you share that yourself. We've got, we're so busy just trying to keep up on the treadmill of life. We're, we're, we're running before we're even walking, right? You know, things are happening, they're happening quickly and crazily, and we don't have time necessarily to think and, and take just the minute it takes to kind of even just view and observe what's going on. We just simply get into react mode in life. So it is a simple concept, it's not complex, um, it takes some practice to be able to get better, to make it a habit, but, but that's why. It's because life is just so fast paced and so busy today. Um, so do we really, is, is, is the underlying challenge of making someone else's day a time management problem? 
it could be, that could be one of the things is just finding time to squeeze it in. So I'm going to be starting um, sometime in the next, next month, a make someone's day moment, two minutes a day, where I'm just going to give a quick story, an example of make someone's day so people can feel inspired and ready to try to do it themselves during the day. But you're right, it is because we're so, so busy and, uh, and it's important that we, we make this a part of our life. Again, because not only are we gonna help people, um, that, that's a nice thing to do, but this isn't just about being nice. This is about being impactful. This is about, in, in, in the work situation, it's about increasing motivation, um, um, strengthening productivity, enabling engagement, and, and, and the thing that many organizations are faced with today, and that's retention. And if people feel like they're working for someone or they're in an organization where people make their day uh, on any type of frequency, they're gonna feel more committed to staying with that organization right now. So you talk about one of the easiest actions to take, which is smiling. Yes. That's, uh, that's, that's an easy way to make someone's day? It is, absolutely. You know, again, what do they need? So. A lot of times what I do is if I see someone really lost in thought or, or, or struggling with something, you know, I just look up and smile at them. And all of a sudden, my smile causes them to smile. That's part of the reaction that happens is that if, if we tell a joke, it's why people laugh. It's that, that interaction. So if they see a smile or hear a kind word, that might just help settle them and make their day that way. That's why it's so easy to do. And, you know, when you're traveling, Peter, uh, I'm in a country that I don't understand the language or very little of it. A smile is universal. We can use it wherever we go. All right. Uh, here's a harder one to do, I think, which is you talk about avoid complaining. Like, you know, avoid complaining is, is all, I mean, I'm, I'm, I sound as I'm interviewing you like a sourpuss, like I'm giving you all the reasons why we shouldn't do it. But I think it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's part of the challenge of making someone else's day, um, which is, you know, again, how we get over ourselves. What advice do you have of someone uh, to support them in avoid, avoiding complaining? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, yeah, you know, it's, and it's so easy, you know, I, we can't avoid complaints. If, if it's something that we need to do or feel frustrated, we, we need to get it out. Mm -hmm. But then we need to move on. We can either wallow in it or we could go beyond it. And I say go beyond it. Don't wallow in it because so, otherwise everything's going to be negative. And you talk about that in the in the in the piece where you talk about overcoming rudeness and incivility. Yes. Um, here's my question: How? Like if we could let go, I, I, I had a, I was at a restaurant and there was a rude hostess. Um, I shouldn't care. It, it's, I'm, I'm probably never going to see the person again. Right. It, it's, it's their issue, not mine. That's super clear. Like, and yet I stewed over it. Like that's right. a completely non-useful thing to do. It should make no difference in my life. And no. yet I stewed on it. So how do you, you know, you're, you're um, you know, sort of say, let go of it. Just don't, don't stew. My question is, you know, and you, you talk about this bottom line of don't let someone else's rudeness affect your life. How? By moving into, you know, it, it does. And I'm with you too. When I get a rude experience, it's like, it just sits in me, right? You want to do something about it. Right. I, I think the thing to do is, is, is that healthy? Is that productive? Is that getting us to where we need to be? Because okay, so I know, by the way, I know the answer to all of those questions is no. Right. right. And yet, and yet, I'm still, we still do. So yeah. like, like I intellectually, I get it. This is that gap between what we know and what we do. And, right. and it's, uh, you know, this is not, making someone's day is not an issue of knowing what to do. And it's not an issue of of even knowing how to do it it's an issue of closing the gap between what you know and what you do so mm -hmm. like how, like i know i i know that i shouldn't hold on to that i know i should let that go and yet 
Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. And there's a whole movie based on Let It Go, right? The Frozen is all about right. that. Right, so how do we, what advice do you have? Like, what have you noticed that helps someone let go of that enough to be able to step out of their own stuff? You know, they're overcoming the rudeness and incivility of others in order to not let it affect their lives. Try to look at it from a different perspective. That's probably the best thing you can do is that what, what do we think that the hostess may have been experiencing the situation? Why do you think she was so frazzled? Do you think that's her personality or is it off night? Or did you look at her funny, Peter? I know you look at so many people funny you know, that, that they just <laughs> freak out. I'm, I'm being facetious here. That is yeah. absolutely not you. And so I can see that when someone acts like that to you, it's like, wait a second, this is, this is not who I am. This is not what I'm expecting. So I think we wanna to try to figure out what might be happening and what might turn things around for her or at least for you and, and, right. and set aside. And it's hard to do, it's really hard to do because, because we wanna get, we want things to be fair in life. Um, and that's one thing about make someone stay. Sometimes you're doing it and you're not getting anything back. It doesn't work 100% of the time. It works the majority of the time and the better we get at it, the more you're gonna hear. I've even gotten texts on my phone from someone who says, you made my day. Mm. Um, so it works online as well as in person, uh, right. but but we've got to we've got to move towards that uh, that effort, and and it is not a necessarily a natural thing, and that's where the work comes in. Right, um, it's that's great, and I think that like what I'm hearing you say is cultivate your empathy muscle because if you you know. Like the way to let go of that is to, is to you know, you can realize it's not about you, and, but, but to kind of connect with your empathy for that person and, and what might be going on for them, even if it's fake empathy, even if it's like, I don't know what's actually going on for them. So right. I don't know that I'm right, but let me imagine what might be going on for them if I assume that people are at their basis sort of good and they're not wanting to walk around being rude to other people. And then, and then the question is, especially with someone who might be rude or incivil, how do I make their day? Like, how do I, how do I turn them around? How do I, you know, crack the right joke or, or, or show some empathy in a way that, um, that, that makes their day? Yes. Oh, I love that question. And I think it's, it's um, considering and trying different options, right? You'll try something in one situation. We'll see how it works. That's where the tracking comes in. So see how it works. And then another situation, try something else based on whether it worked or didn't work. Right. And that, that's the best we can do because I wish there's a formula to say, this is the way it's going to work every single time. You're always going to get these results. It's right. not like that. We're all human, right? And there are different things that, that upset us and, and, and inspire us. So it occurs to me as I listen to this that um, making it when when I experiment of what I could do or say that might make their day, I am also risking having the opposite impact, meaning I'm, I'm interacting, I'm engaging with someone and I might I might smile at someone and they right. might think I'm sleazy. Like right. they might, they might be offended by that. They might, I mean, I, 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 that's, you know, the most simple thing I can do, but that it could easily be, be mistaken. And so I think one of the things, if we want to go off and make people's day that we have to be able to recognize is we might fail. We might, we might have the opposite impact and that shouldn't stop us from doing it the next time. I mean, Absolutely. something different with a different person, but. Yes, yes, absolutely. And again, it'll work more times than not, but they're absolutely, I agree with you. There are times it's, it's not going to work. You know, and sometimes it's simple, silly things that work that you think, really, this is all it took. So, so for example, I was in a hotel in St. Louis and, and going, asking the front desk, where's the workout center? I know it's around here somewhere. And the front clerk looked at me and she said, you made my day. Now I was in St. Louis and who else was in St. Louis? The Chicago Cubs playing the Cardinals. Talk about one of those storied rivals. It's like Red Sox, Yankees, right. um, same sort of thing. 
and I'm thinking, I'm wearing this cup shirt. She's saying, you made my day. Well, the cup shirts was one of those giveaway items and it was sponsored by Portillo's. Portillo's is a very popular fast food chain here in Chicago. And mm -hmm. it was that person's favorite restaurant. So there are times that do things that make someone's day. I don't even realize what I'm doing. When she saw Portillo's, it brought back so many memories for her. She may not have even seen the Cubs logo on there. She just saw Portillo's. So we don't know. Sometimes it's the silliest of things that do right. that make someone's day. And you know, when you have those experiences, even though you're not necessarily doing anything consciously, it just reinforces the opportunity and the reason to do that, to make someone's day becoming part of your life. Right. It's great. We've been speaking with Howard Prager. Howard has written most recently the book, Make Someone's Day, Becoming a Memorable Leader in Work and in Life. Howard, it has been such a pleasure talking with you. You made my day in this conversation. And welcome. Uh, thank you so much for being on the Bregman Leadership Podcast. Well, it's a pleasure, Peter. Thank you. I'll just remind your readers if they want to find me, howardhprager.com is my website. They can sign there. They can find the downloadable track sheets as well as a chapter of the book. Um, but it's been a pleasure. And thank you for really helping challenge me to say, how does it work in these challenging situations? Because as leaders, we are facing those challenges every single day. We've got something that's going on that's really important. And make someone's day can help us do better, work better, inspire better, motivate better, and retain better. Um, we're all going to be better off. It's great. Thanks, Howard. All right, Peter. Bye bye.